This is going to be controversial, but we need to talk about how most experts completely miss the point when it comes to the gut-brain axis. For years, the dominant theory was that stress, anxiety, and depression mess with your digestion. So, for example, up until the 80s or 90s, if you were someone who was struggling with IBS or bloating, chances were that you were told it's all in your head, that your nervous system is overreacting, and that you just need to calm down and then do some breathing exercises or maybe try an antidepressant. Then, over the last couple of decades, more and more research has shown that this thinking is completely backwards. Instead of the brain messing with your gut, we are now seeing that the gut is messing up the brain. In other words, digestive issues aren't a result of stress, they're actually the cause. This, of course, flipped the whole gut-brain conversation on its head. But it also misses the point. Let me explain. One of the big issues is how modern nutrition research is done. We have hyper-specialized research focusing on incredibly narrow topics. One team is studying serotonin in the gut. Another team is looking at probiotic strains. Someone else is measuring inflammation markers in the brain, and all of them are trying to find a single cause. So they're trying to find one significant correlation that explains everything. That's a big mistake, because biology doesn't work that way. The body isn't one single switch. It's a feedback loop with a system. So when you look at just one part in isolation, you miss the bigger picture. We've spent years asking, does stress cause IBS? Then we ask, can probiotics fix depression? But those are the wrong questions. What we should be asking is, what caused the body to stop regulating itself in the first place? That's where this gets interesting. Let's use the example of the gut microbiome, because it's basically the star of the gut-brain axis discussion. You've probably heard that an imbalanced gut flora can mess with mood, digestion, and immunity. That part is definitely true. But what most people, and even the experts, don't ask is, why did the microbiome get out of balance in the first place? Or if this question is asked, then the answer is usually very superficial, like something along the lines of processed food or again stress. Too often, we treat the microbiome like a passive victim that needs help from the outside. So probiotics, fermented foods, stool transplants, whatever. All these definitely help, and I'm not against them, but you're really just treating the symptom here. Because in many cases, a bad gut microbiome is actually just a downstream effect. It's not the root cause, it's the result of things like high oxidative stress and very specific nutrient deficiencies, like zinc or magnesium. If your body doesn't have the raw materials and energy to maintain the gut barrier and to produce digestive enzymes or support a healthy immune response, then the gut microbiome will naturally shift into something more harmful. So it's not just about what you put into your gut, it's also what your body can do with that input. This brings up a really important point that almost no one talks about. There are two sides to the gut-brain axis. One, the input side. This is where most of the focus has been. You eat fermented foods, take probiotics, try to seed your microbiome with good bacteria. This is the traditional gut-brain model. The idea is that the brain and nervous system are interlinked with the gut, so we need to nourish the gut to calm the brain. Again, I'm all for this, and there's nothing wrong with this approach. But you also need to look at the other side, which is maintenance. And that's what usually gets overlooked. If your body is low in nutrients like zinc, magnesium, but also glutamine, if oxidative stress is through the roof, or if your mitochondria aren't producing enough energy, then your gut lining starts to fall apart no matter what else you put in it. Your body stops producing enough mucus, digestive enzymes, and immune cells that normally regulate the microbiome. That's like trying to plant flowers on dry, cracked soil. It's not going to work. What I'm trying to say here is that a good gut health program always needs to work in tandem with a protocol that also fixes the rest of your problems, like chronic inflammation, nutrient deficiencies, poor detox pathways, and nervous system dysregulation. That's because your gut isn't operating in isolation. It's deeply connected to everything else in your body. If your zinc levels are low, your immune system can't properly police the gut. If your liver is overloaded, toxins back up into your bloodstream and irritate the gut lining. If you're stuck in sympathetic overdrive, so that constant fight-or-flight mode, then your digestion literally shuts down. 
I would even go so far as to say that if your gut protocol fails, and many do, it's not because the gut can't be fixed. It's because the rest of your system hasn't been fixed first. Now, this isn't about doing everything perfectly either, but just about understanding how integrated our body systems work. Because once you focus on these underlying factors, something amazing happens. Your body starts to self-regulate again. Your symptoms will stop swinging back and forth, and you don't need as many supplements. Let's be honest here, that's the real goal. Not to depend on protocols forever, but to rebuild the internal resilience that you were meant to have in the first place. Again, this video isn't about bashing the current research. It's just that many studies operate on a model that treats the microbiome like something that needs a little boost, instead of asking why it fell apart in the first place. So what I'm saying is that focusing too much on monocausal relationships misses the bigger picture. If you want to learn more about the underlying drivers of energy and health, check out the description where I will link free resources and my recovery program. It includes the exact protocol that I used to get my energy back after I crashed and after I developed all kinds of issues, including gut issues. This will help you avoid the most common mistakes that can set people back years. For more info, just open the description. Everything will be found there.